As a lifter, I found myself sometimes coming up from practice and suddenly the upstairs floor was inundated with tons of women. One of them I picked up saying that she didn't really want to get bulky. I internalized it and felt judged and as a reflex judged them back and judged the whole group harshly. That is Emily Del Perro, and this is Tiny Conversations. I'm Brian Colley. Emily is an extremely intellectual, articulate, and thoughtful person. A few months ago, I asked her to be on this podcast, and when she didn't respond, I thought nothing of it. Then, when Emily said she wanted to talk to me for my podcast about something that was on her mind, a thought she said that kept coming up while working out at the gym, I happily agreed. So after one of our workouts, we met up in a park to talk about what was on her mind. Here's that conversation. What you posted to me on um, Facebook about sort of just like, I don't even know what to call it, perceived differences between sports. In your words, where's your head at with this? I don't mean this to throw a whole culture of people under the bus. Um, or to be hypocritical at all. But I just wanted to point out a trend that I've noticed um, online and in my daily conversations with with friends. Um, And it's really a a culture, um, I guess I'd call it a culture of mutual derision um, that I've noticed. And I don't quite know where it comes from, but I think there's a a lot of negative energy that people dish out and receive and I think that by becoming aware of it um, and by talking about it you can shed it and move on and accept the positive energy and focus on the positive aspects of whatever sport you're in. I come at it from the perspective of having been a runner, um, a yogi for two years, transitioning to triathlon for two years and then deciding I liked road biking better for two years and then finding CrossFit and then gradually getting more into the community here and finding my way to Olympic weightlifting. Um, And so I'm very, very lucky to have a whole bunch of friends who are so talented in every area that I've, uh, that I've dabbled in, worn many hats in. Um, And so they often post articles. online about the newest science that they find or opinion pieces on blogs about um, about their own sport or about other sports and I notice that it's always from the lens of you're doing, eating, thinking um, living wrong and every time I click on the link to read it um, I notice that that I'm like, I feel nervous. I feel a negative energy. Like what mental battle am I going to have to wage? Like either I'm going to be angry or ashamed or frustrated by something the author says or something the author points out that, that I'm doing that makes me so feel so obviously on the wrong path. So I just kind of noticed that there, these, there's an onslaught of these articles coming out that are sort of, written to tear egos down and at the same time uplift other egos you're you're kind of looking at me like a bit perplexedly well it's i'm looking at you perplexedly more so i'm looking at the topic perplexedly like wow that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff to live with when all you basically said is i want to i want to be healthy like i want to feel good and i'm reading articles about sports and athletics and things that are supposed to make you feel good the thing i always wonder is where does that come from well judgment breeds judgment um and i think it comes from maybe the negative stories that we tell ourselves so um i'll give you a tangible example um so at our gym right now uh a pro sports company has come in and started offering free boot camps and running seminars um and as a lifter, this was new. Like the whole boot camp mentality is very alien to me and I don't really understand it from, from a personal perspective. And so I found myself sometimes coming up from practice and um, suddenly the upstairs floor was inundated with tons of women um, who were strangers to me. 
And it felt like it was kind of imposters in my house. That's sort of what I felt like. And then I'd hear snippets of their conversation and it, it would come across as though um, they were judging me. Like one of them, I picked up saying that she didn't really want to get bulky or another one um, was just really making a big deal about her hair or makeup in the mirror and I cringed inwardly. And I don't know why I, I stopped and paused at this because like... I do those things. I fix my hair before I go to practice. And maybe that woman who was worried about being bulky, just like, that's her right to, to care about that stuff. But, um, I internalized it and felt judged and as a reflex to judge them back and judge the whole group harshly. Who am I to, to paint a whole group of women with, um, a particular color or particular thoughts and, I want to be more mindful of those thoughts and be able to let them go before they happen and before I internalize them. What do you think needs to happen, though, for people to to just be like, that's awesome you're doing this. I'm going to do this other thing. I think the first step is just becoming aware of the of the reflexive defensive thoughts that we have or that we formulate almost on, um, on impulse without much thought. Um, and once the awareness happens... And you start to become more more mindful of what you're thinking and feeling. You can you can shed those thoughts because they're not important. All they do is tie you down with negative emotion. Um, so in my in my academic life, I've been studying with a psychiatrist who um, whose methods are very unconventional. But what he does is mindfulness based therapy, where he teaches people um, not to let their thoughts the stories that they tell themselves about what other people think about them or um, what their parents will think or what the world will think when they do certain things. Um, Not to let those thoughts bog them down because those thoughts are, um, they trigger depression and they trigger significant anxiety. And he tries to get his patients to, or his clients or his, um, yeah, his patients to, to let go of these thoughts, which are not, they're not true. Like there's no proof that these are true. You can't ever extrapolate what someone else is thinking unless they tell you directly so by being mindful he says you know take note of those thoughts acknowledge them or don't give them the time of day but let them go um and it's hard mental work because on one hand you have a a fast quick judgment that you can make and feel safe and on the other you can acknowledge that fast judgment and do internal work in yourself to let go of that negative energy and focus on the positive reasons about why you're doing what you're doing. So when you were talking about the passing the people who are about to do the boot camp class mm-hmm. and they said something about not wanting to get bulky, why do you think you internalized that? Well, I think maybe I felt I think maybe I felt threatened. Um, and I felt defensive, like, oh, they don't understand what I do. And then I felt angry. Just very, very rapid um, emotions in quick succession. Um, when really it doesn't matter what they think. Um, and if they don't want to get bulky, that's fine. And I can't be responsible for what other people think. I can only be responsible for what I think. Which is kind of why I wanted to talk to you about it. Because I think in order to to continue being mindful and continue this work, maybe it's selfish, but I kind of want to recruit my community. Like I want to recruit the people who give me so much positive feedback, like my coaches and my teammates and my friends to, I want to welcome them to also try and become mindful of these things so that we can have positive conversations about the things that we do and leave all that negative stuff behind because creating an us and them culture through negative thoughts, like, assuming that I'm much different than the, the ladies who attend boot camp or the men who attend boot camp in this way by assuming that they're lesser than. Um, it's a lazy way to build community. And it's, it's kind of, it's easy and quick and sweet in the moment, like, I don't know, like an Oreo cookie. I think I use the, the term Dempster's bread. But like at the end of the day, there's no substance to it. It just makes you feel bad. What I'm curious about is... What, what, it, what it actually looks like on a sort of a day-to-day level. If you feel the impulse to make a derisive comment that's not going to be helpful or useful to the situation, like, and you make it, maybe take note of it and say, oh, maybe I'll need to check my head. There's no shame in, in, in making these thoughts, but then checking your head because it's kind of like practice. It's a mental practice. 
or just or just taking note of it and and then not dwelling on it like if you make a note of why you don't have to spend too much time on it you could just let it go and say you know what I had a great session today and in, instead focus on something positive positive. and it's huge I make it sound I make it sound light as a feather in a way but but it's huge mental work to do that and, and keep tabs on yourself all the time I mean I think if it helps us stay more positive even 10 or 20 percent of the time I think we'll be a stronger community for it. After our conversation, Emily Ashley went and wrote an article about this topic. You can find a link to that article on our website, tinyconversations.com. If you want to get in touch with Emily, she tweets at Emily Ann. I tweet at Brian Colley, and our theme music is by Broke for Free. Thanks for listening.